the celebration of the Whites this year and the Conservation Center, and we thought that we would have um, Brian invite Brian out to talk to us about two spectacular white birds, the deer falcon and the snowy owl. So here we have a male snowy owl, um, one of the larger and more powerful owls in the world, and uh, certainly the most powerful we have here in North America, along with the great horned owl. And ironically enough, talking about snowy owls this year, this year happens to be what's called an eruption year for snowy owls. So we're seeing them in places all across the country where they normally would not be seen because migration and necessity has pushed them down into areas where they don't normally live. Now, living up in the Arctic is obviously a very difficult existence. They've got to deal with extreme temperatures and deep snow and storms that last for days and so forth. So. Uh, when, it, when it gets severe up there, they'll often push farther down south. Uh, they've been seen all over Connecticut and New York, down into Jersey, and they've even gone as far south as Florida and been seen along the dunes, along the beaches. And they like wide open areas. Uh, they love airports, unfortunately. Airports are <laughs> wide, flat areas that remind them of their uh, tundra habitat. Unfortunately, that's a problem because of the planes and the bird protection. We've all probably heard about how that happens. Unfortunately, even in New York City, they were shooting a few snowy owls earlier in the year. Some of you may have heard about that, which is unfortunate. Uh, but they can be a danger to the plane, so it's understandable, but there's obviously an easier way to handle that than by shooting snowy owls. Um, and you can see that he's already opening his mouth, so he's panting a little bit. And that's just looking around and taking it all in, and, and the warmth as well. He hates summer and he loves winter. This has been the happiest last six months of his life. The <laughs> terrible weather that we've been having, he's loved it. So these birds catch whatever they can to survive. They're all birds of opportunity. They'll take any opportunity and catch anything they can to survive. Obviously being a larger, more powerful bird of prey like this, they can tackle larger things. Up there in the Arctic, uh, they like to eat a lot of lemmings. Lemmings are kind of a hamster-like rodent uh, that, are, that are very, very common in the tundra. So that shape of that face helps them to hear better by directing sound into their ears. The bird's ears are very large. And some species are even larger than the eyes. You just can't see them because they're hidden in all those feathers. Around his eyes are thousands of tiny hair-like feathers. In some owls, it's really obvious. It's a very well-defined, two big discs or circles of feathers. And all those little feathers are in layers. So his ears are positioned directly be beside them, on the side of, of his head, like ours are. But they actually point out of his skull in slightly different directions. So when an owl is flying around out there, he's not only using powerful eyesight and sharp eyesight to spot the movement of the prey, they're going by sound. When it's dark, the darker it is, the more they hunt by sound. Another misconception is that they can see in the dark. Also not true. They can't see in total darkness. Their eyes really give them the best advantage. They work best in low light or dim light. Owls are known for silent flight. Their feathers are specially designed, especially the feathers on the leading edge of the wing. The edges are split apart, fine little hair-like appendages so that when they flap their wings, the air actually passes through the edge much more gently rather than over uh, the surface roughly. So it takes away, it dampens the sound. But because snowy owls are more diurnal, they've got less of that going on than some of the more nocturnal owl owls do. Now just like the owls, there are hundreds of species of falcon all over the world and they also come in all shapes and sizes and colors from very small, the size of a kestrel, no bigger than a songbird up to the gerfalcon, which is one of the larger species. And basically, the gerfalcon is the counterpart to the snowy owl. They do the same job, but they feed on different prey to a degree, and they do it in a different way. While an owl isn't the fastest flyer, because they're using the element of surprise to catch the prey, and often doing it at night, Falcons are far more aerial and much, much faster because they are far more specialized in the sense that falcons survive primarily by catching other birds. Those owl toes are very thick, very powerful, and shorter for tremendous leverage because they're catching rodents. So they're dealing with a rodent's thick hide and a powerful animal that's struggling and fighting for its life on the ground. Uh, these Birds are catching other birds in flight. It's more high speed, it's more aerial. Um, so they're snatching something in flight. So they've got longer, thinner toes. The way to tell what a bird eats is to look at the two primary tools, the feet and the beak. If you see a bird with those long, thin toes, they are at least partially, if not primarily, a bird eater. The number one rule 
in training a bird of prey, and I don't care whether we're talking about a hawk, a falcon, an eagle, or an owl, is learning how to read that individual bird's behavior. Everything a bird does, every mannerism, every body language will tell you a story if you know how to read. You know, any guy, anybody who trains anything, horse guys, dog guys, they're reading that, they're reading the behavior of that individual animal. And when you learn how to read the body language, that'll tell you all you need to know. There's always a little risk involved. You can be wrong, the bird can send up false signals, but for the most part, what the bird is telling you. You can read the language.